What happened to the li- Uh-uh, I'm not playing that. That's my attitude. If you don't like it, I don't switch up, that's my attitude. Move distance, call me longitude and latitude. See me on the screen, that's- What's up guys, it's your boy Dalen Ryan. I'm back with another new video. If you're new here, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below to become a daylighter. Turn on the post notification bell so that you'll never miss when I upload. And make sure to share this video with your friends and family. That way they will be filled in on all of the greatness that is Dalen Ryan. And this new Choices tea because I'm pretty sure that this stuff is about to get really spooky and really hot. I got a haircut if you didn't notice, you know. You know, <laughs> it's looking a little bit uneven right now because I combed it earlier and kind of laid down so I kind of like smashed it to one side a little bit but you know it's whatever so if you're excited to read choices like I am then let's go ahead and just jump into this video choose your character space faded is me let's name him day okay our phone is ringing buzz hmm what Still half asleep, you grope around on the shelf until you find your phone. Ugh, who's texting me at three in the morning? Literally. Dan. Hey, are you there? It's Dan. But why did I read it like it was a question? <laughs> I messed up, I'm so sorry. It's been a while, are you okay? What happened? I went back into the woods. I had to be sure, I had to prove to myself that it was all in my head. First of all, I can tell this is scary because look at the background of the, the freaking text conversation. That's how you know it's gonna be scary. But isn't it day? It's all real. He's real. Who is he? Are you drunk or something? I heard him whispering, just like when we were kids. Stop it, Dan. We all made that stuff up. Mr. Red was just a dumb kid's game that got out of control. He doesn't exist. He never did. He does. He's here with me now. That's the part where I exit. You're not about to bring that to me. Keep that in your little s circle. Wait, where are you? I can hear him in the trees. Uh-uh. I hear him whispering. And the fact that this is at 3 a.m. though. 3 a.m. Of all the times. 3 a.m. A harsh tap, tap, tap from the window makes you jump. Dropping your phone. Ah! Dark shake looms outside the window. Hearts hammering in your chest. You fumble for the light switch. Light floods your bedroom, streaming out the window to reveal. Dan? What are you doing here? Day, can I come in? I... I guess so. Hang on. The fact that he just shows up minutes after we text is so... No. Mm -mm. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. You move to the window and slide it open enough for Dan to climb inside. You got some explaining to do though. First off, how'd you get up to my window? What the are you doing here? Um, if there was a way to ask both, I would be asking both. So we're gonna go with the second option. We've barely spoken in years and suddenly you decide to pay me a visit at three in the morning? I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Just tell me what's going on. You sounded really freaked out in your text. It's nothing, I'm fine. Come on, we need to get the others. What others? Our friends, Stacy, Lily, Noah, Lucas, Ava, and Andy. Dang, they got a whole group. I've got something to show you, but we need to bring everyone. I've barely spoken to any of that group since we were little kids after what happened. But they have to come, Day. Everyone has to be there, that's the rule. Rules? I don't know any rules. Your phone buzzes again, rattling against the floorboards. Sighing, you pick it up. Dan, I want to help you, but honestly, you're freaking me out right now. We got our first day of school in like six hours. We can talk then, okay? Your phone buzzes again. Another notification popping up on the screen. You look down. Are you still there? I think I'm lost. Uh-uh, 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 this ain't adding up, this ain't adding up. One of these isn't Dan, and it's none of my business, so like, whichever thing this is, this needs to get out of my home. ASAP, no Rocky, no Ferg, get out. Dave, my battery's almost dead, please help me! Wait, we have to go back to the woods today. Uh-uh, 
The lights in your bedroom flicker as a chill wind sweeps your window open. Hands trembling, you slowly look up from your phone screen. Dan? That's not Dan. A smile spreads across Dan's shadowed face, stretching wider than it should. Like this. Day. You start to back away, but Dan's hand clamps around your wrist. You try to pull free, but he clings to you with an inhuman strength. Hey! I should scream for help, find a weapon, punch him, wait for a tire me! Oh man, I'm tired me! Uh, find a weapon, punch him. Snatching up a heavy ceramic mug, you smash it across Dan's head with all your might, but he barely even flinches. This is, this is a demonic entity. What the? Dan throws you to the floor, pinning your back against the rough boards. We all have to go back. Don't you remember? Get off me! Claw at Dan and his flesh crumbles beneath your fingernails. Dan leans in, his cold breath stinking of moldy dirt and blood. Everyone plays together, Day. <gasps> oh my gosh, no. No, I wasn't prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for that. The creature's hands tighten around your throat. Your vision begins to blur, shadows seeming to writh and bleed in the dark room. What is hurrying? Let me just say oof, oof, Roblox, oof. You have no breath left to scream. You simply sink, paralyzed in terror, into a cold black nothingness. Okay, so I guess this is, it lives in the woods. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It lives in the freaking woods. Chapter one, old friends. Nah! You jerk into wakefulness, adrenaline burning in your veins as you thrash against your attacker until you realize that you're alone in your room. What a messed up dream. Reaching up to feel your neck, you flinch as your fingers brush the fresh bruises there. Nerve loss, day is barely coping, oh no. What the? Scary or upsetting things will decrease your nerve score, okay. Beware, a low nerve score will make it much harder to keep your cool in dire situations. Oh gosh, no way, this can't be happening. You grab your phone to look at the text from last night, only to discover that the battery is dead. Crap. Sighing, you toss your phone into your school bag and turn to your closet. Guess I better get ready for school. Need to look good for my first day of senior year. Ooh, but it costs 20 diamonds. Oh, I have 65 diamonds. Okay, so I could rock this look, but let's see what else we have. <clears throat> Leatherman's jacket, okay. Ooh, sweater weather. Okay, this is this is definitely my style. I like this one too though. I'm gonna go to sweater, boom. Sweater weather for the win. Grabbing your school bag, you hurry down the stairs. Outside, you cast a nervous glance towards the woods that border the edge of your yard. Oh my gosh, we do live by the woods. I'm thinking we didn't. This looks so creepy. Mr. Red? Dan couldn't have seen them. That was all just make-believe. Or was it? As you descend the steps, a friendly voice calls out from the yard next door. Sid, morning neighbor. Oh, hey Sid, what's up? Just coming back from our walk. Hey, Hilda, look who it is. A blur of black and white fur crashes out of the bushes, looking around excitingly. <laughs> Hilda bounds over to you, her bushy tail waving like a flag. Hilda is adorable. Hi, girl. Things that make you feel happy or brave will increase your nerve score. Oh, thank goodness. Having a lot of nerve will help you weather the trials ahead. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Aw, good to see you too, cutie. Hilda flops on her back, wriggling happily as you rub her belly. Your parents around? I didn't see them out and about this morning. 
Yeah, they're still overseas dealing with my great aunt's estate or whatever. They'll be back in a couple weeks. That's a long time for a kid to be by themselves, especially in a big house like that. Yeah, well, I can take care of myself. It does get a little scary. The nightly ragers keep me occupied. Oh, mmm. Uh, I can take care of myself pretty well. I just turned 18, you know. I can do my own laundry and everything. Wow, what a flex, so can I. I'm getting pretty good at mac and cheese too. I've only set off the smoke alarm like three times this week. Oh, they grow up so fast. Sid suddenly cocks his head, taking a few steps towards your house and crunching down beside a small pile of loose dirt. Huh, wonder what that is. Sid picks something out of the pile and holds it up. A glossy black stone carved with a strange rune. This yours? Mm, mm, mm not mine. Let's examine it. Weird. Stone is surprisingly heavy in your hand. You move your thumb along the deep crack that runs through the center of the engraved room. I wonder where this came from and what broke it. Beats me. Looks like a paperweight or something. Brushing away some of the dirt from the stone, you freeze as a familiar smell wafts into your nose. Cold earth and a hint of blood. It smells just like that thing that... You stop yourself glancing nervously at Sid. Don't say it's the monster. It smells like what? Uh, weird. Kinda smells weird. Sid nods, dusting off his hands. Well, I'll let you get to school. You just let me know if you need anything, all right? My door is always open. Will do, thanks, Sid. Sid whistles and Hilda jumps up to follow him. Once they're out of sight, you look down at the stone in your hand. If what I saw last night was real, this could be a clue. Better keep it somewhere safe. Actually, can we not keep it? Cause I feel like if we keep it, it's gonna bring some sort of bad luck. So like, let's not keep it. It takes a few tries for you to open the shed door. It's rusted hinges screeching with every shove. Jeez, when was the last time someone was in here? Pretty sure that means we're not supposed to be in there, but go on. Cobwebs tickle your face as you approach the work table, setting the cracked stone down on its dusty surface. We found the cracked totem. The inventory shed will house all the weapons, artifacts, and lore documents that you collect over the course of the story. There are 16 in total. Some will make you stronger in the trials ahead. Others will provide valuable information, backstory, and clues. Good to know. I bet I could find all kinds of stuff in here. Flicking off the light, you step back out into the yard, shutting the shed door behind you. A few minutes later, on the Absalt Road that runs along the edge of the woods, you hear a car approaching from behind. Stepping to the side, you glance up, locking eyes with the driver of a black vintage Camaro. That guy looks familiar. The car slows to a stop and the driver leans out through the window. Hey, do I know you from somewhere? Do I know you? I think so. I'd like to know you better. Mmm, I think so. I was just wondering the same thing. Do you go to Westchester High? Not anymore, thank God. Lucky you. Me to my old school. Hang in there, you'll be out before you know it. Anyway, I'd like to get back to work. Catch you later. He steps on the gas and starts to pull away. Oh, I never got your, but he's already too far away to hear. Disappearing around a bend in the road. Name, never got your name. Shrugging, you continue your long walk towards school. And we gotta walk all the way to school? A thin crowd of students trickles across the front yard of your school, waving and calling out to friends as they converge on the front doors. I feel like I should switch their voices up, so if y'all have any ideas for voices, let me know down below, cause I don't wanna just be reading in the same voices, but it's the first episode, you know? YOLO. Squeezing through the loud, crowded hall, you find a familiar girl standing at the locker next to yours. Oh, hey Ava. Sup? Not much. That hasn't always been your locker, has it? I've never seen you using it before. Got reassigned. 
Ava looks like she is a lot of fun. Ava kicks the locker shut and shrugs her bag onto her shoulder. Oh look, it's Lily. Following Ava's gaze, you see a nervous girl clutching a textbook to her chest. Um, hi guys. Hi Lily, it's been a while. How was your summer? You excited for classes? Um, how was your summer? It was good. I just got back from doing a coding camp up in Portland. One of the other girls invited me to collaborate on a game she's working on. It's awesome. Let me know if you ever need a play tester. Lily glances around, lowering her voice. There's, um, there's actually something I wanted to talk to you about. Sure, what's up? I got some really weird text last night. Did you? Lily trails off. Looking over your shoulder, you turn to see a pretty girl walking by, chatting with two friends. Then we'll go through the... I've been... <laughs> I've been ghosting this guy for like two solid weeks, and he just asked me out for coffee again. Oh boy. Just when you think high school might not be the sucking neurotic... Narc... Necrotic chest wound that you remember? The guy next to Brittany laughs, running one hand through his hair. Yikes. Desperate is not a good look. Maybe he's just not scared of ghosts. You could try clowns instead. Clowns are gross. That's not... Joss, do you even know what? Huh. Hi, Brittany. The group stops in their tracks and Brittany turns to give Lily an appraising look. Wow, Lil. Great sweater. I didn't know Baby Barn had a quadruple XL section. She's... <laughs> She's rude. Lily is barely coping, oh no. I I just wanted to say hello. And I want a red Ferrari for my birthday, but I'll settle for not having to listen to your whiny voice anymore. You're the one with the whiny voice though. Your friends have nerve scores too, and your choices can make a big difference. Oh God, so now not only am I in charge of myself, but I'm in charge of my fellow friend group. How much more complex can this get? In the final chapters, a character's nerve score will decide if they vanquish their demons or succumb to a terrible fate. As if the pressure was not already high enough. As if it wasn't. I should tell Brittany off, act like Brittany isn't there. We're telling her off. How dare she do that to our friend? You know my camera stopped recording. Right, because basing your fashion sense on whatever the wannabe models on pictogram are wearing is way cooler. Newsflash day. No one asked you. And no one asked you to have such a funky attitude, ma'am. Didn't hear anyone asking for your opinion either. How about you take your unsolicited fashion advice to someone who cares? You so do not want to me off day. Ooh, I'm shaking. <laughs> Lily looks down at the floor, hiding a small smile, as she should. We got your back, Lily. We got your, Daylighter's got your back, Lily. Don't even. Don't even be pressed about that. <laughs> Lily is back as tough as nails. Good. Oh yeah? Well, you want some too, Jocelyn? Shh. Witty comebacks aren't your strong suit. Track and field, Barbie. Cross country. I know. I used the wrong one on purpose to piss you off. Try to keep up. How about you go haunt some other hallway freak? Ava gives Cody a long, ponderous look, then reaches up to pluck a stray hair from his shoulder. You know, I keep meaning to try this new curse out that I found on the internet. If you feel a burning sensation in your eyeballs, that's normal. I stand Ava already, like she. <laughs> Waggling her fingers, Ava stalks away down the hallway. Later, guys. Later. Bye, Ava. Ew, Cody, what's gonna happen to your eyeballs? Chill, Jocelyn. That weirdo just reads too many vampire novels. With any luck, she'll flunk out and go live in a dirty old shack like the Pritch the Witch. She is just like Pritch the Witch. We should call her, uh, Ava the Witch. <laughs> now she thought that that comeback was no. Wow, good one, Joss. And you're dumb as bricks. You're dumb as bricks if you found that funny. You shake your head, literally, turning to grab a notebook from your locker. Well, lovely this day has been. We should probably go. Oh my gosh, is that a hickey? Jocelyn reaches up, poking the fresh bruises on the side of your neck. Get off of me, bro. 
Ow, get off. Yeah, right. Like anyone wanna chew on this social reject. Have you looked in the mirror? Your nose literally looks like a road. Like your nose has the, a down slope of negative one over four. For your information, someone tried to strangle me. It's none of your business. I got it from my mom. No, that's gonna sound weird and probably get our mom in trouble. No, it's none of your business to be honest. Rawr, someone's crabby this morning. I think you just have that effect on people. Whatever. Fascinating as this combo is, I need to get ready for the pep rally. I hope you fall and break your ankle. Brittany jerks her head and the others follow. Cody shoulder checks you as he walks by, knocking you hard against a locker. Mmm, we're not gonna go there. Ow! Hey, we'll catch up later, day. Wincing, you rub your shoulder where it slammed against the locker, glaring after the bullies. Bro, they suck. This year's already off to a great start, huh? Should we report them to the office or? Sure, millionth time, the millionth. <laughs> sure, millionth times the charm, right? Maybe this time they'll actually get in trouble. Wow, so even the school ain't doing nothing about these little kids. See, the school ain't doing nothing. Lily smiles ruefully as the two of you join the crowd of students shuffling toward the gym. Music blares over the gym speakers and a rush of panic hits as you're jolted by the crowd, your mind flashing back to the night before. Oh gosh. Dave, are you okay? Yeah, just, uh, kind of crowded in here. You see anywhere to sit? Not really. Oops, I skipped over too much. <laughs> Oh, never mind. That's Ava's spot. In the top row of the bleachers, Ava sits scribbling in a worn sketchbook. As you watch, a couple of freshmen move to sit beside her. Yes. The freshmen trip over themselves, scrambling to get away from Ava. She glares after them, then notices you watching her. Ava nods to the empty bench. Is she inviting me to sit by her? I think she is. Maybe I could talk with Ava about what happened last night. She knows all about the kind of supernatural stuff. It'd be nice to tell someone who'd actually believe me. Yes, it would. Talking through your troubles or just spending time with friends is a great way to boost your nerve, okay? Sit with Ava for a chance to catch up and learn from her supernatural expertise, okay? But is it gonna cost me? Of course it is. Um, I don't wanna be rude. I'm just going and spend a little diamonds. We gonna sit with Ava. You go ahead. Ava kinda, um, scares me a little. Come on, Lily. Ava is not that scary. Like, as long as you're on her good side, she's not gonna put a curse on you. She's not gonna hex you. Just, just, you're not a bully. She ain't gonna hex you, don't worry. You sure? Yeah, I think I'll sit next to Mr. Cooper. Oh, and thanks for your help earlier day. Anytime. See you later, Lily. You climb to the top row of the bleachers and sindle, siddle over to Ava's corner. You point to the empty spot right next to her. Hey, anyone sitting here? Just my ghost friend, but he's in corporeal, so it doesn't really count. You laugh until you realize that Ava's not laughing too. Uh, sorry. I just can't tell if you're messing with me. It's all a part of my mystique. You look at the bench, then back at Ava's expressionless face. I should sit by Ava, leave room for the ghost. Um, we'll leave a little bit of room, out of respect. Ava smirks as you sit down, leaving a person-sized space between you and her. Well, good to know I can make you do stuff by saying random spooky nonsense. Oh wow. The two of you sit together for a few minutes in silence. Ava scribbles in her notebook. So you're gonna tell me what you're so freaked out about or are you having fun dismembering that poor bench? Huh? You look down realizing that you've been picking splinters from the edge of the bleachers. Are our fingers not sore from that? I do wanna talk about it. It's just, it's kind of a weird story. Day, look at me. Weird is my middle name. Ava Weird Blank. Good to know. Really? Well, no, it's Dolores. But if you want to tell that to anyone, I will go to your house and hide your eyeballs in your food. My camera's about to die, so...
Well, I'm back and it is the next day. It is actually 2.49 p.m. My camera died last night as I was filming, so here we are again. So that way I don't leave you guys on a big old cliffhanger. Let's go ahead and get back into this. Where did you even get next time you go to pour a bowl of cereal? Boop. Eyeballs. Noted. So, what would you say if I told you that last night I saw some kind of monster? Depends. What did this monster look like? Well, he looked like Dan at first. Whoa, plot twist. Keep going. Once I figured out it, was, it wasn't actually Dan, it attacked me. Then its face kind of melted off and underneath the skin was just dirt. Like a, I don't know, a golem. A golem? What's that? I've heard of those. I. It sounds like, um, no, I'm thinking about a gargoyle. So I was thinking about a gargoyle for some reason, but so then, okay, what's that? A humanoid form, usually crafted from dirt or clay, animated by a supernatural force. I love Ava's voice. Like she, I try to make her sound like calm and like mysterious, but I don't know. Y'all be the, y'all are the ultimate judge of what the voices just sound like, so. <laughs> Sounds like it fits the bill. I guess. The weirdest thing is that I woke up the next morning and it was gone. Why would it just attack me then leave? Full disclosure, my knowledge of golems is like 60% Wikipedia and 40% this dude named Magic Stan 75 who I met on a warlock forum. Maybe whatever power that animated golem is temporary, or maybe it was just a dream. You shudder, reaching up to feel your neck. Definitely not a dream. Dreams don't leave bruises. They can, actually. There are beings who can enter or even affect your dreams. One of these could probably use your dreams to hurt you. You could also be under a curse or something. I've read a lot about cursed dreams. Wow, Ava, not scary at all. Not, not messing with us at all. What, just for fun? Sure, let's go with that. Ava, how do you know all this stuff? You're a little weird, you know that? I think I'm kinda in love with you. Um. She is definitely weird, but I wanna know, how do you know all of this stuff? Like, even though she just told us she gets it from like, Wikipedia and this warlock dude, I just need to know like, how do you know all of this stuff? Well, there's this thing called the internet. You know what I mean. It seems like you've been studying this for a while. The world's a freaky place, day. We learned that the hard way. I just want to be ready the next time something happens. Thanks, Ava. I really need to talk to someone, but I didn't think anyone would believe me. Hmm. Jury's still out on me believing you. You could be making all this up to screw with me. Do people do that to you? They try, but my kung fu is strong. Well then, thanks for listening without immediately dismissing me. It helps a lot. Cool. Glad to help. Okay, I think I'm done now. Uh, done with? Being nice. See, I've got this whole bitter misanthrope thing going on. If people see us being all friendly, they might think it's okay to talk to me. <laughs> Can't have that. I would literally die. I, I think she's being serious. You pick up your stuff and start edging towards the stairs. Hey, Day. Yeah. You're not as big as a tool as most people. Coming from you, that means a lot. Yes, it does. <laughs> you make your way down the bleachers as they continue to fill, looking for any place you can squeeze in. Finally, you spot one empty seat right next to a familiar figure slouching in the second row. Is it Dan? Oh, okay, okay, I got scared. Noah. Oh crap. You quickly turn around, desperately scanning the crowd for another open seat. Any seat but that one. 
but there aren't any. You consider trying to sneak back out the gym doors until someone shouts at you from up above a few rows. Hey Day, sit your stupid butt down, unless you want to watch from the garbage can. I forgot how I had made his voice sound. I, hello, you're blocking our view. There's a spot right there. Wincing, you turn back around to see Noah looking right at you. Hey Noah, do you mind if, knock yourself out. Noah scoots over and you squeeze in beside him. So what's been up with you lately? We haven't really talked since. Yeah, I know. You sit, neither of you saying another word. Down on the floor of the gym, a tall, handsome guy with a gla blah, blah, with glasses walks up to the podium. Lucas. How you doing, Winchester High? The students roar in response. The bleachers rumble and shake as the crowd pounds their feet on the wood. Whoa. When did Lucas get so popular? Shortly after hitting six feet and discovering hair gel, shortly before getting elected student body president, Lucas waves to the cheering crowd, flashing a smile. Welcome back, everyone. For anyone who doesn't know me already, I'm Lucas Thomas, your student body president. I know everyone's a little salty that summer is over, but trust me, this is gonna be the school year that you'll never forget. And on that note, let's kick off this pep rally Westchester Wolf style. At Lucas' signal, several cheerleaders jump up from the bleachers, bouncing and waving their pom-poms in the air. You can do better than that! Let's hear it! I forgot I made her voice sound weird. Looks like Stacy's doing pretty well too. Wait, is that the mean girl still? Okay, I'm confused on the characters now. It's gonna take me a minute to memorize them. One by one, the cheerleaders tumble across the gym. Stacy draws thunderous cheers as she pulls off an effortless round off into a backflip. Whoa, that's incredible. Yay, go team. Beaming, Stacy looks back at the rest of the cheer squad. Her smile suddenly fading as she locks eyes with Brittany. Okay, Brittany is the mean one. Brittany, okay. Stacy turns and suddenly trips over her own feet, sprawling on her face. Oh no. <laughs> Stacy! You jump to your feet, hurrying to help Stacy up. Are you okay? What happened? Oh, poor Stacy. Nothing. I'm just a klutz, I guess. You think you're a klutz? I think it's kind of cute. You did a freaking backflip. You did a freaking backflip. Seriously, if that's what a klutz looks like, then sign me up for klutz lessons. Thanks, Day. You're a sweetheart. I try. <laughs> did you see that? She was all like, well, ha! Please tell me that the school news nerds got that on camera. Flushing, Stacy rejoins the rest of the squad. You sit back down at the other end of the gym. Brittany steps forward with a smug smile. Check this out. Brittany takes three running steps, then flies into a no-handed cartwheel. The crowd roars as she sticks the landing. Nobody cares. Ugh, why do people like her so much? They've got to know how horrible she is. And she's hot, and she can do flips. We can't compete with that. Lucas grins from the podium as the cheerleaders return to their seats. Well, now that the cheer squad is totally done blowing our minds, Let's give it up for the Westchester Wolves basketball team! More applause sounds as the group of guys in basketball jerseys forms up in the front of the podium. That yeah, go Wolves! Huh, Andy actually made the team this year. Good for him. Looks like he's been working hard, working out. Looks like he's been working hard. I can't wait to see him play. You flinch as Cody's voice breaks through the general applause. Watch out! It, wait, that is not his voice. <laughs> what? Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. It's the triple threat. Andy's head snaps in the direction of Cody's voice with a force, with a face suddenly twisting with anger. Hey, why don't you come down here and... He takes one step toward the bleachers, but stops himself as Lucas calls the team captain up to the podium. Oh, Andy, don't, don't, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Thanks, Lucas. What up, Westchester High? The crowd whoops and stomps in response. 
We got our first game coming up in a couple of days, so you guys better be here to watch us crush it. Not gonna lie, we got a couple of rookies on this team this year, but we're not gonna let that stop us. The lights flicker. Huh? Oh no. Lucas's voice calls out over the speakers, drowning out the nervous chatter of the students. Everyone, stay calm. We don't want anyone to fall from this. A burst of static cuts him off and the music stutters, fading in and out. With a loud bang, the gym doors are blown open by a frigid gust of wind. The lights flicker back on and you nearly jump out of your seat as Noah suddenly grabs your arm. God, what are you? Shut up. Do you hear that? Hear what? Shh. And you do hear it. Just barely on the edge of your perception, you hear a sound that snatches all the breath from your body and leaves you cold. No, not here. You look around, picking out the faces of your familiar friends. What the? This can't be. N no way. Oh my gosh. Oh. The music sputters and dies as the lights shut off completely, leaving only the voice. A voice that is only completely alien and horribly familiar. Everyone plays together. That's the end? I can't believe that that's the end. I literally can't believe that that's the end. Like it, we need, we need chapter two. If you guys enjoyed this, you need to let me know if you want me to read chapter two and let me know about the voices as well because this, this was wow. All right, you guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below to become a daylighter. Turn on the post notification bell so that you'll never miss when your boy uploads because when I upload or drop bomb videos, make sure to share this video with your family and friends. That way, they are filled in on everything that is Dana Ryan, as well as this new choices, spooky, spooky. I, I still don't know how to phrase it. This spooky tea that choices has provided us we'll go with, we'll go with that for now but anyways i love you guys and i will see you this weekend in my next video which if you don't already know was going to be i edited myself into living maddie because got a lot of requests to do that so i'll see you next time in day and daylight love you bye